checkerboard border. So, what did I see? Oh, this one. That one has such a cute little one, Diane. It's just adorable. So, the checkerboard border is really made out of these little four patches, and I think they're adorable, little four patches. So, for I'm working on the big checkerboard border, and mine are going to be six and a half inch blocks. And for this little guy, it's going to be, it's going to be three and a half inch blocks. And while he gets that all fixed, I want you to notice my little sign up here. Is that cute? Elle's Kitchen. Isn't that cute? There's somebody in this class that made it. Who do you think did it? <laughs> Sally did it. Sally did it, Al's Kitchen. And I think that Joan did this little clothespin bag. Isn't that adorable? With the little apron in it. I just thought it was so cute, too. And she did some of the letters, too. Those are really cute. And it was her idea. It's really cute. It's reading, Orion's reading it backwards. <coughs> or, or is that Eric? Oh, look at the nice smooth moves that guy's doing. Whoa, smooth moves. <coughs> really, really cute. Okay, so go right into the checkerboard. Come right down along here. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, now you could just go and do all of these four patch because I know you had to. You know how to do that, right? Yeah. But this is tricky. Do you see how it goes around the corner? Ah, did any of you try that? You have to do it two different ways. So, this, so let's just look. Okay, so this is the, um, for 12 inch blocks, these are three and a half inch strips, right? You can just sit and you can strip. How many of you are strippers? <laughs> Okay, and I just sewed all my strips together and pressed the seam to the dark side. Okay, and this is what I like to do. I like to take my strips and I like to put them back right sides together. And I'm making them so that they lock, the seams lock together. Yes, good. So you just roll them, you just go like this and get that all flat. And actually, I said that I, um, I really like to have a shape cut, but I couldn't find one around. So all you have to do is just square off the end to get rid of it. And for a 12-inch block, what size are these? Three and a half. Three and a half. Okay, so how many sides on the quilt do you have? Four. So I like to actually make four separate stacks, one for each side, so this particular patch will only be used once. How's that? Is that good sense? So as you're cutting, you just go ahead and you line them up so that you don't have them all together. You only, you put, you, I've got my four rows and these are kind of like extra. And so then when you're ready to sew them together, you just take one stack, okay? And you keep all of these pieces in the same stack. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to move this iron. And I'm so set. I can't believe it. I just nearly fell on the floor. <laughs> oh, we have been going and going. So this is the fun thing. You only have to make 112. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that fun? Don't think about it. Just all strips. You can just like, just power one day. <laughs> Get some help. But anyhow, these are all out of scraps. Do you guys have scraps left over? Scraps. Who has scraps? You end up having all of these cut pieces around. So I put a size of strips, 11, 3 and a half by 11, but if you have different sizes, if you want to expedite it and do like a 40-inch piece and, you know, just really do it fast, it's cool. So 
And this is the other really fun thing in these that you swirl the seeds, okay? So you just open it up, and this time Yvette taught me this. Did you know that? You don't even have to unsew these stitches here. You just lay this down clockwise, going down this way, around, and then push it to the left, and the center pops open. Did you know that? She taught me that. Because that's the hard thing of always un unsewing those. Okay, so um, the sides, there's going to be a quiz later, listen closely. The sides have 13 four patch. 13 four patch. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to make, huh? Okay, so now let me see. I'm going to turn the page because I want to lay it out for the sides. This is what's really important. You make all your pieces and for sewing the sides together. This is very critical. It says, follow the position carefully. So this time, you put the dark in the upper right corner and the dark in the bottom left, okay? And you have to do it like that. And because these are all swirled, the seams are all swirled, when you pick this up, it's going to lock together right here. So you just sew that together. You see the picture? How important it is? It's on page four, the second column. It says, get those all laid out exactly like that. And you just sew. Remember, you're working with one stack. And you sew how many together? 13. Ooh, cool, you're listening. Okay, I just want to show you something. Did you know that even once you sew this seam together, this seam is what I just did, you can still swirl these seams. You can just push them in. Um, this time is counterclockwise. Whoop, counterclockwise and open that little four patch and mush it good and you still have that flat center. So, and then the directions say you just, you just press your piece just as they were swirled, as they were swirled. Okay, so did you know that there's a company called Swirly Girls? Swirly Girls, and they were at, at festival in Houston, and I went up to them, told them how nice their booth looked and everything, and the one that she was a young girl, she grabbed me, and she started to cry, and she said, oh, I fell for quilting the moment I saw your smiling face on television. <laughs> Is that sweet? I thought that was really sweet. Okay, so now we're going to take it right up here. Okay. This is the side, and this is where it starts. It's a little big. But you see, um, I have the dark and the light in the right position, right? Okay, so I'm just going to lay it right down here, and we will know this is the side. Okay, and then we just keep on going with the top and the bottom, and so... This would continue on here. Let's see if we can just continue. Ooh, that looks good. Okay, and now look at page five. Okay, do you see how the blocks are turned different this time? Okay, now your dark is in the top left and the bottom right. And it's exactly the same thing. You sew them together. You have this big, long row. Whoops. Stop the steam. <laughs> Thank heavens. That kind of gets annoying, doesn't it? OK. So you, you, can you tell the difference whenever you see them on page four and on page five? OK. And so I happen to have a whole big, long length. Top and bottom, 50. Fifteen of them. And look what happens when you lay them together at the corner. Isn't that cute? Aww. So it just continues on the whole way around. 
And so these are six and a half inches, and these guys are only three and a half. Oh, I got sphere. I was afraid you weren't going to remember for a minute. Okay. And so, actually, you add your framing border. You guys already have your um, framing border. And then you just put your sides on. Look on page six. It's really cool. Your framing border. And then you add your sides. Press toward the framing border. And then you add your top and bottom. Press toward the framing border. And then you have an outside border that you add all around the quilt. Cool? It, nice, huh? Very nice. Only 112. <laughs> that is all. Only 112. But it is strips. It is strips. So it's not so bad. All right. So I think this looks so good. I'm just going to take this. Now I have to get a quilt. Now I have to get my blocks done so I can put my 112 little four patch around it and see. When I was at market and festival, I did buy more fabric. <laughs> what was I thinking? I had to. Yes. And I would say that as markets, festivals go, it's very positive. I think that the quilters are just so tired of using their stash, they're just letting loose of their cash. <laughs> or else they have their stash all used up, huh? No? No, so there were people that were buying machines there and lots of fabric and books, and we were really excited. It was a lot of fun. And Orion did not stay with us. He had to come home for Halloween. Oh, little bum. Okay, so that's the um, four patch. Turn the page, and we come to the floral border. Da -da. Doesn't that picture look nice there? I think it's very nice. And so this is what I would like to explain. I have done something a little bit different, and I'm going to show you. So, have you ever completed your whole center, and then you've added your borders on all four sides, and then you've put your vine on? Putting your vine on is not too hard. But then you put your flowers on. And how do you manage your quilt to sew around the flowers? Carefully. Carefully. Like, oh, you, oh, you would be really tired, Sharon. <laughs> You would be really tired swinging that quilt all around because it's pretty hard to manage. So what I've done and what I'm going to show you right now is that I have literally kept my borders off of my top. I've sewn all my units separately. And once all of the stitching around the outside edge is done, then you put your borders on. But it's all done. Oh, let me hear it. Oh, oh. And there's one other thing that I would like to tell you. I took home the other quilt that I had last month. Did everybody see that one? Yes. That from one la last month. Well, I put it on my bed, and the fit is great. But what I saw was that I couldn't really see the top swag. Because I, put, I, you know, I made the bed and I put my pillows on. I go, oh my gosh, all that work and this was lost. And so the next one that I do, I am going to do one swag, one very large swag. I'm going to go down the side, the whole way across the bottom, and up to about here, so that when the quilt is on the bed, you really see the foot, the foot of the bed, and you see this hanging over, and it looks beautiful. And I'm going to make pillow shams for across the top. Oh, nice, huh? Nice. So it looks really good. So I'm going to start with my, my bias vine. How many of you have done a bias vine already? Oh, pretty good. How many of you have done a bias vine? 
a biased vine. Yeah? Somebody not have not haven't done it yet? Okay, fine. Oh yay! Joanne's never seen it. Good. Oh, two Joannes. Okay. Well, what I like to do is make my bias with a 16-inch piece because it seems that your 6 by 24 ruler fits very conveniently on it. And so on this one, okay, I'm going to put my 45-degree line on my left edge, on my left salvage edge, okay? And see how you could possibly do a 17-inch strip because I have just a little bit down here in this end that I could still fit another inch out of it. But we think that 16 is really convenient. And so this one all I'm going to do is just cut off the corner on the 45. And this you can actually turn into your leaves. This would work, huh? Or you could just take it. <laughs> One of the ladies said, oh my gosh, I wish I was there picking up those scraps that you throw. Some of them are pretty big. I said, oh yeah, after I'm all done, you guys, I just get around and pick them up. Okay, so now we, we are going to cut one and a fourth inch bias strips. So it's really easy just to keep on sliding your ruler over, and this is at one and a fourth inches, right? And cut. Okay, there's a chart there. So for, a, I'm calling that a queen size. Now that is like a um, queen size, but with the 12 inch blocks. And your chart tells you how many of these bias strips you need. How many do you need? Eight. Eight. Okay, eight. And so I'm just going to actually cut two. And for your six inch block, I'm going to start referring to this as a wall hanging. How many bias strips do you need? Four. Only four. Okay, so this is good. This is almost too much to get rid of, but I do like to keep my table clear. Okay, so it's tricky sewing bias together. So I always lay it out right side up and just see. Okay, it's going to be, that's going to be right side up and then you just take it and you flip it. And this is one of those things where you have to let your tip hang out. There's a little tip at the top, yeah? There and at the bottom. And once you sew one seam, you can just assembly line sew. You can just continuously sew your bias together so you get it done really fast. And so let us see. So, I had to go and do a stage show in um, Houston without my video assistance. There was no equipment. Orion wasn't there. Chris couldn't set up the equipment. So I had to go in cold and just make it all up. And so I entertained them. And of course, I had to talk about my tips hanging out. And they all laughed. That was good. That was good. Okay, so pretty good. Pretty straight, huh? Pretty straight. It could be straighter, but then you just take this seam and you open it up right there, like that. And these little guys sticking out, you just trim off. Okay? Trim those. Okay, and then you take these and you press them in half, wrong sides together wrong sides together. So it tells you how many you actually, in yardage, how many you need for each side. Does it tell you on that paper? Yeah. Okay. Two and, two, two and a half yards, and that's for the big one. And how much for the one and a half? One and a half. It's going to make that vine on that corner. Oh my gosh, I'm getting a sauna. Woo! Look at this. This is hot. Isn't it fun that it's getting, look, I can't even see you. <laughs> uh, that was good. <laughs> and my face is just glamorous now. It's taking the wrinkles out, right? Taking out the wrinkles. Okay, so we got our 
our pieces together. I have another one in the drawer. So we're making the bias fine, and now we're going to flip to page 10. Ooh, now this is where it really starts. So I'm going to do um, seven and a half inch border strips. And somebody in my magical drawer. By the way, I loved what you all wrote last last month. Remember, you told the things that you really like about block parties, mm -hmm. and what and. <laughs> You said some really funny things. But it really made me think I haven't dressed up for a while. And that's why I did this. <laughs> cool. Okay, so these are my sides. This is what I'm doing. Remember I told you that they are not going to be attached, right? They're not going to be attached. Okay, so I pressed it in half. I'm going to use this fold down through the middle as measurement. The sides, you don't have to piece. This is the right side, and this is the bottom, the bottom, and the bottom does need pieced. And so I have, my, here's my piece. It's a one and a half inch, and so I am going to put it so that the piecing is more towards the middle instead of right on the end. See, when you have like the piecing right near the end, you look and you go, aha, they screwed up. <laughs> they cut it too short. Don't you think that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so anyhow, I'm going to lay it out like that. And now I'm going to start doing some marking, okay? And you just kind of keep it right like that. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is get a pen, this one, the, the um, friction pen. Oh, yes. Love you can press this out, so if you screw up, you can just iron it out, it's right? Wonderful. It's wonderful. It is wonderful. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is set up my piece here. So I have a, about a half inch extra so that once I get all of my stitching from my flowers done, it's going to shrink up. So I'm giving myself a little leeway, okay? And then I'm going to go over here. Actually, if I just follow this, I'm going to draw a square for um, my small quilt at 8 inches. I'm going to mark in 8 inches. See my, can you see my line? Oh, it didn't make it very dark. You can see it? Let me dark, draw it a little darker, okay? So then I'm just going to take it and draw a diagonal line and end it a half inch from the edge, okay? Can you see that in your drawing? I went back over it, but now, oops, I should just, I should just uh, press it out, get rid of it, but you guys know, okay? Okay, so then... I'm going to go along here. This is a small quilt, and we're going to have small curves, okay? And so I'm going to put a little cheat mark at four and a half inches. Okay, so you guys help me with the math. Four and a half and nine, nine. nine. And the next one is 13 and a half. Okay, do I have only three little cheat marks? One, two, three, right? And that's right on the fold. Okay, and then in the next side, then let's turn this around and let's get going. Okay, you tell me. Four and a half and nine, nine and yeah. 13 and a half and 18. 18. Oh, you're good, Joanne. Are you a <laughs> math major? Okay, and how many lines? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. And the last number is? 22 and a half. 22 and a half. Okay. So we're going to use these lines to kind of curve in and out, curve in and out, okay? Gentle curving in and out. All right, now it would be really cool if I, ah, where did my lid go? It's probably on the back. Oh, <laughs> it's stuck on there. Ah, cool. All right, okay. So now. We actually want to do, I want to make sure this is, oh, this is what I just did, huh? 
And somebody said, have a magic drawer. Doo -doo. Yes. And how long is this piece supposed to be? This is for my small one. One and a half. One. Ooh, I could cut off a little bit. And a half. There's a little extra on there, huh? Okay, we'll just leave it on there and we'll just do what we want. Fifteen and a half. I'm going to get fifteen and a half inches. Fifteen and a half inches. Fifteen and a half inches, and I'm going to pin it. This is what I need to go up this side. Okay? This is what I need to go up this side. So I'm going to get my handy dandy pins, yes, and I'm going to pin this right here. Right there. Okay, now we're going to start curving our center, or our corner. We're going to curve our corner. Okay, you ready? So we're going to start going like this. We're going to curve it down and around and up to the fold, okay? And the thing is, you don't want to stretch it. You want to just kind of ease it in there. And the, the point is, is that you really want to just make it to suit yourself. How's that? Just make it to suit yourself. And I think if you can press in your, um, your fold, see? I'm pressing it so that it's just about in the middle of my diagonal line. How's that? Is that looking good? Press it down flat and just keep on working with it. Make yourself happy. Don't stretch it and bring it over and we'll just kind of just lay it right here. All right? Is that good? Huh? A <laughs> hundred and twelve. Okay, that's not so bad. Yeah, it was supposed to be fifteen and a half. Okay, so now I'm uh, I'm gonna go up this side, all right? And do you see that little mark at four, four and a half? Okay, well I'm gonna go kind of up over it about. I'm going to go up an inch from my fold. I'm going to go an inch up from my fold, okay? And I'm going to just start pinning. Oh, Joanne, you're not game for this, huh? After we went and we did all this thinking for you? Huh? Okay, and so now I'm going to go down on the other side of the fold and come over to the four and a half inch mark, right? Got it? Look how beautiful. And pin it and ease it in. Don't push it too hard. Put it in there. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to switch again. You just keep on switching back and forth and just about an inch off of the fold and just lay it right like that. And so guess what you get to do? You get to cover the end with a flower or a yo-yo or something like that, right? To make it really. Okay, so just keep on working with it and lay it down. I think that looks good. See, it's just going in and out, in and out. And now you do exactly the same thing on the opposite side, only you go out a little bit longer. See how it's longer on the bottom? It's longer on the bottom. And so you just keep on pressing it down, pinning it down. And then, guess what you do? You... So what? Uh, is Orion the only one that knows, huh? <laughs> All right. 
So, da -da -da -da! look at this. There it is. And actually, at this point, you can go ahead and cut this piece right here. Do you remember how I was just wrapping it around? So see, now you're going to just lay it out. It is longer. It's not cut to size. Nothing's cut to size. That's just going to line up there like that. And I used a scant quarter inch seam going really close to it, Orion. I used a scant quarter inch seam. Usually I set my needle for center at 3.5. I set it, I moved my needle to the right to 5.0. So it's very scant. You can see that along there. Yep, very scant. And then all you do now is just press, press it down and find a thread that matches it really good. I found this thread and it's pretty good. And now what I'm going to do is just do a straight stitch along here. And if you want, you could do it with the four-letter H word. <laughs> Hand. Think how fun you could sit by TV and watch it and just stitch it down, right? That's right. So now it's separated. It, now it's all ready. <laughs> and so now let us see. Do, 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 do. My magic drawer. What do we have now? Take a guess. Flowers. Flowers. Okay. Pardon me? And buttons. and buttons. You could do flowers and buttons. Um, you just remember on the leaf. On the leaf, you make uh, mirror image leaves. Mirror image leaves. They go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay. I'm using paperback fusible. Here is right here, my uh, leaves. You can take, um, there's two different ones. These are the same patterns that are in your cherry blossoms. So you have to go back to your cherry blossoms pattern. You all have that, yes? yes. And I bet you even remember it. You have your little cherry blossoms and you can trace two side by side on the paper side of the fusible. You know you only fuse for about two seconds. That is the biggest thing. I think people want to um, fuse longer. Okay, I do want to caution you. Do not trace around your template with your friction pen. <laughs> It does. I did it. How many of you did it? It's like so dumb. Like, what am I thinking? I just can't even believe that. Yes. Yes, I did it. I did it for marking the lines on uh, triangle P squares. And that. Oh, what happens? Nothing there. That is bad. Did I tell you the story where um, the woman said she um, just sat down with a cup of coffee beside her quilt that she had just marked, and the steam from her coffee took all the lines away? Just like that. See? She put it in front. Yeah, that's the story. Everybody talks about that, and I just think that it doesn't really come back. I think that is just the the pen. I don't know where it goes. It just disappears. I don't know, but it must. It must still be here because um, yeah, really <laughs> makes the inks. So I have some really cute ones that I did. You make a total of 20 flowers, and so you put 10 on each swag. 
and on each wagon. It really looks cute. And see, like, there's three in the corner, and then just riding along, and you put your little leaves on opposite sides. It's just so fun. And look at this leaf. I had fun, and I really was thinking about cutting all the little leaves out like this, like a fussy cut leaf. I thought maybe that would be cute, and then I thought about stitching around it, and I said, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. These ones are so little that I think what I'm going to do is just stitch around my flowers with uh, maybe a matching color of thread and a small zigzag. So like every time I have a little turquoise flower, I would just go ahead and stitch it down with turquoise thread, do all the turquoise ones, and then... Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm speed, speeding forward. I told you that I was going to do it. Yeah, I sti I'll stitch it with my fingers. Yeah, I just wanted to see how cute they look. But I have turquoise, yellow, red, and pink. So aren't they fun? So you, so could, you could also use the, the stems that you get at Brown Flower instead of having to get a single season dye. What was that? The round flower dye has a stem. The round? Oh, you're talking AccuQuilt. AccuQuilt. Did I show? Yes, we're, we, um, I'm going to show you the AccuQuilt. And now you can use steam. You know that the first time you're not allowed to, supposed to use steam. For two seconds, you just press the, the paperback fusible. And she, that girl is jumping ahead of me. <laughs> hold it. Hold the phone. Okay, so. We've got our vine all, pre all stitched down, right, Yvette? Yeah. Our vine is all stitched down, but see, I actually did say I was going to do a straight stitch or by hand. Remember that little line, mm -hmm. that four-letter word? Mm -hmm. I told you all of that. So then, and then now it's time to put those in place. And, oh, yes, thank you. Just push the button. Push the button. Okay, well, I trace. I traced all of these, but you can use the AccuQuilt. Ta-da! And you guys know you could come over here. You know we do sell these, but you could come over and you could use them, right? And it's so much easier. So fun. So this is just for the 12 inch. We have to get a little die for the 6 inch, but... Um, this is just a big piece of fabric with the paperback fusible on the back, and it is called the Funky Flowers. Isn't it cute? Let me see. The Funky Flower, 55042. Okay? You could use the little flower. I think it's too little, though. See that little flower? It's too little, so you can just put your fabric up on it. Did you ever figure out, Sally, that it's better Fabric up or paper up? Which one did, did you figure it out? Which is better? If I do more than one layer, I, I make sure we just go fabric to, to fabric, fabric. Fabric to fabric. Yeah. Folks, you heard it here at <laughs> Quilt of the Day. And then can I turn this one right side up? Okay, so you can cut through six layers of fabric, but the fabric is one layer and the paperback fusible is another. Okay, so you've got that on there, and then you need to have this little plastic cover, and then, I love this, and then you just get it going through, and, huh? The other way? The other way? No. It is going through. It is going through. Yeah, uh, you turn this away from you. I always remember you turn it away from you, right? Yes. Oh, look at this. Funky flowers. And you need to keep a pair of scissors handy just in case you have to cut. Aren't they cute? 
Aren't they adorable? Look at that, six flowers just like that. And they're perfect every time. And look at this little one. Uh, yeah, you have to. Um, we keep it over in the... And see, there's a second little flower. Do you see the little flowers in that vine? The little flowers are there, so you can work those into... Oh, compared to this, this is, there's a, um, this is a lot bigger. Yeah. Sorry, you got to trace these and cut them out. But anyhow, this, these are nice and big so that you can put buttons on top or you can put yo-yos on top or do whatever. Okay, and look, there's a little center. There's so many little things. Anyhow, the flowers are on the funky, funky flowers die, yeah, and the leaves are on another, okay? So let me just get rid of that. The leaves are on this one called, 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 oh, wow, wow, wow. patent pending round flower. And it has a stem, too. Yes, it does if you want to put a stem, but I think the way we just did the stem is a lot easier than going that way, don't you think? Okay, so it doesn't, it doesn't look like um, uh, Teresa prepared me green, but what I want to say is that your flowers need to be mirror image like this, you know, and like this mirror image. And so to get mirror image, then you need to fold the fabrics like right sides together. And this way I'm going to get, I'm just being wasteful right now. Okay, so you could go ahead and fold this whole thing up. You probably should have done that. And so now when you run it through, put your plastic on. But this is a cute flower too. Huh? But lots of outside edges. Oh my gosh. Okay, so see I'm rolling it so that I'm rolling it away from me. Ta-da! And let's see if we have two flowers. I mean two leaves. Mirror image leaves. Ah! Ooh! Isn't that fun? So I love the AccuQuilt for, um, for all of the um, applique pieces. And then look at this. These are more of the Riley Blake buttons. So don't sew your buttons on till you get it back from the long arm quilter. She doesn't like buttons to sew around. Can you sell those buttons here? Um, I think we will. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> Are they cute? Yeah. They're very cute. Oh, they're a math flower. They are from Riley Blake. There's 21 inch buttons. These are all buttons in here. We um, went to Riley Blake when we were in Salt Lake City and we went through their warehouse and we just had a lot of fun and they gave me these fabrics to make that quilt and they sent me the buttons because, I want to tell you why, because they've invited me to teach at a conference in Salt Lake City. And so I wanted to go and have um, a quilt Las made Vegas, from their fabric. Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Thank you for listening to me. In Las Vegas. Now, I don't know if I'm going to wear my boa when I go to Las Vegas. <laughs> that might not be too cool, huh? Yeah, they'll think that I belong there. I'm one of them, huh? When are you going to <laughs> How to get those borders on? You didn't even ask. Or did you look at the instructions? You looked at the picture. It's easy, isn't it? Okay, so look at this. It's very, very easy. So you, you just measure where you have that one part all finished with the flowers. The vine is stitched down, and you line up this edge with your uh, side and you measure and at the top you trim it off. 
you trim it off and you do the same thing on the opposite side. You're putting your swag up at the top. So you trim off at the bottom, right? And then the next ones, when you do the top and the bottom, you see how you just line it up so you can sew right around that corner, right there. And you cover the intersection with the biggest flower you can find. <laughs> and that way you won't be frustra frustrated manipulating that whole big quilt under your needle. Okay, so now we can really do the scallop, all right? So I'm curious, how many of you have used the quilt in a day scallop? Let me see. Ah, a couple of you! Because it makes a quilt look so pretty around the outside edge, so old-fashioned. I, re I really love it. But the one thing that's really cool about our ruler is that you can make an adjustment. You don't have to use this one measurement all the time. You can adjust it based on your um, sides of your quilt. And we already decided it for you. Yay! And we think it's going to work. We think that um, it's going to be really good for you. But for the six inch block, it says plan to make seven scallops approximately seven inches long seven scallops. And Mara told me to tell all of you that he can't count because he screwed up and he only put six. One, two, three, four, five, six. He only put six. So right on here, right now, Merritt screwed up. <laughs> he can't count. He put seven marks but not six scallops. So anyhow. So, the first thing that you have to do, and this is what, no matter what size you make, is you take your ruler, your diagonal ruler. Remember, your borders are already attached. All your flowers are on. So, you just draw your diagonal line, corner to corner. And so, you take a look at this ruler. It says they're going to be seven inches long. So, I put glow line tape on the right of seven here and on the left of seven there. So if you actually take your ruler, you can measure this, whoop, turn your ruler over, and you can see that that is seven inches from edge to edge, from glow line to glow line. Okay, and then the next thing says scallop. Line up with outside edge of quilt. So I'm going to turn this so it lines up with the outside edge of the quilt and you move it over so that seven hits right on that diagonal line. Easy. And then you take your marker. Oh, this is my best friend, because if I screw up, I can just press it out. OK? So that's from one to the next. Now I'm going to slide this ruler, line up this line with the edge, and put seven right here. OK? Seven right here, and do another one, okay, and move it along. Now, if there's seven, I'm just about, if I do three, I'm up to the middle point, right? Well, this is the deal. What if this is not going perfectly? So you skip the middle, and you start clear over on the other side, and work towards the middle, and you make an adjustment in the middle one. It could be a little longer, a little shorter. Nobody will notice. So you always make your adjustment in the middle one, OK? And so you can see I'm turning. All right, turn the page. Remember, merit can't count. So now to do the corner, you just swing around to the second side. You line up this seven right on that corner, and you go right over to seven. And you just keep on going, getting that all lined up. And trust me, what if you want to sit down and have a cup of coffee with this, and the whole line disappears? So as soon as you get this all marked, then sit down and sew on the line, just to sew on the line. Just sew down on the line. You see the last illustration? 
it shows how to stitch down, stitch on the line. Um, because when you're ready to send it to the long arm quilter, yay, quilt with your credit card. <laughs> so that is stitched down. And you won't, even if she presses it for you or anything, that line won't disappear. You want to mark your scallop before you send it to the quilter because when she layers it and she quilts, she is going to quilt clear out to that line. Or you, are you, how many of you are going to quilt your own? Cool, I'm impressed. So see, you just quilt out to that scallop line. And then when you get it back, then you can go ahead and trim off like an eighth of an inch from that line before you add your borders or your binding. And your binding has to be uh, bias two. Um, we show you to cut bias at two and a fourth inches for the binding, but some of you prefer only two inches. And you do the same thing. You can stitch it on the right side, and when you fold it to the back, I really think you got to hand stitch it down. Yeah. Don't you think? And this is kind of like good TV work. Oh my goodness, I forgot to show you Wonder Clips. These are the best. Okay, these are the best. Okay, this comes in just a little package. I'll open it carefully, okay? It's, this is just a little package for $6.95. There's 10 in here. Okay. These are the greatest things. Okay, so... Here they are. These are Wonder Clips, small package, and they just they just clip. Uh, Look at that. On the and they yeah, and see they have a little line on the bottom, little measurements. So you know how when you turn your quilt to the back, you don't always get it even. There's little measurements on there, so you just line up those little measurements with the outside edge, and. I, I mean, they just slide along. I'll put it in the, on that quilt. But since I found these, I love them. I love them so much that I gave Sue some for her birthday. And then when Christmas came around, I said, I want to give you a gift, but I don't know if I already gave you these. said, I'm going to give you Wonder Clip. She said, you already gave them to me, but I'd like more. <laughs> but see how you just, when, you, when you're binding... Yeah, see, you can line it up, and you just hold your binding down. You can get a bigger package and just, you know, go a real long way. And then when you sit there light, they're not like pins jabbing into you, scratching up your leg. But you can just sit and hand stitch around these and just pull them and move them. I love them. Wonder Clips! Wonder Clips!